Uh, I figure what I'll do is I'll first I'll take questions and answers from the review. I have a second review that I used to give out. It's not quite as good because it's based more on the Alberta curriculum. Remember the Alberta questions are a little tougher. But I do have a PDF of, of that and a handwritten solution key. I'm going to put both of those online tonight. And when I email you guys, I'll, in, I'll include a link if you want those as extra practice. Okay. And then I'll also try and give you some generic hints about the test. I don't think you're going to find too many surprises on the test. So specifically, the last big mega quiz that I gave you, that there probably is about 70% of the test, maybe even higher. Okay. So if you understand how to do that, you're good. What's not on the big mega quiz? Uh, simplifying factorials when you have one on top of the other. Okay. There's also some questions from this review that I'm not hugely fond of, but it's better than the other one that I used to give away. So let's start out by saying, are there any questions from the review that you would like me to go over? Ask away, my children. Yep. 34. Pat, could you do me a favor and shut that door? And Jimmy, could you do me a favor and shut that door? And then let me get Jasmine going on the test, and I'll give Lorenz a copy of the review. So number 34, there's absolutely going to be one of these on your multiple choice section. I'm going to give you some kind of a factorial expression to simplify. And I'm going to be honest, I think the one that I give you on your test is actually even a half step nastier than this one, okay? Also because some of the questions on the multiple choice are, you're going to find are really, really easy. Oh, I'm just multiplying and I'm done? Yeah. Some of them are going to be that easy, but some of them are going to be trickier. I'll also give you some hints about the written section as well. But uh, number 34, here's what I would do. First of all, do you notice, Shanna, there's no factorial on the end there? So I'm just going to keep dropping it down and see what happens at the end. So I rewrote the M. I looked at these two, and I said there's nothing. I look, looked at these two. There's nothing that let, lets me cancel out a factorial symbol. But what I can try and do is expand one of these until stuff cancels. What's bigger, n plus 1 or n minus 1? So I'm going to expand that. I'm going to say that's n plus 1. What's 1 less than n plus 1? What's 1 less than n? And I'm going to stop right there and add my factorial sign because that's what I had in the denominator. So now I can cancel out the factorials. And what I have is n times n plus 1 times n. If I tidy that up, I have n squared times n plus 1. I didn't see that answer anywhere. Oh, you know what they did, Shanna? They multiplied and got rid of the brackets, didn't they? Which is the correct answer? D. D. D as in dog, as in the one I circled. D. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said B. Yeah. Is that okay? Um, there's one question somewhere in the review, I can't remember where, where it has something like this. I'm just making this up. It has like n plus 1 factorial, and then it has an n factorial in brackets squared. I don't deal with that. What I do right away is I treat that as n factorial, n factorial, because isn't that the same as n factorial all squared times itself? And then usually they'll have a second term up top here, like an n minus 1 factorial. I would mentally just kind of divide it into too many fractions and simplify each of those first, and then go top times top, bottom times bottom, and see what I get or something like that. There is one like that somewhere in your review. I can't remember where, but I know it's there somewhere. Okay. What number? Did you find it, Jet? Oh, okay. Next, 11. By the way, are you guys able to access my solution key? Okay, there's a mistake on the solution key. So all of you look up. The answers are right on the back of yours. And I already paid the dollar out to Courtney, so those of you that are wanting to claim the dollar bounty, you're out of luck. Um, for some reason on the handwritten one, I picked C15 for number six. It is B14. I counted wrong on my fingers, go figure. No comments. Thank you. I heard that. Okay. 
Anyways, number, sorry? 11. 11. Hello, number 11. Okay. How many six-digit numbers greater than 800,000 can be made from those? I said, well, six digits, and this looks weird. I fell back to fundamental counting principle, first of all. I said, okay, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I'm greater than 800,000, that has to be an eight. How many ways can I choose an eight from here? One. And then I said, now this is a bit different because in the previous questions, I never gave you the same number twice in a row. Here I have two ones and three fives. Here I have two ones. O oh, begins with one. One begins with one. And three fives. Huh? You know what? I said, that's a word. How many letters in that word grand total? Five factorial over how many ones? How many fives? That's how many there are. This was tricky. That, that, by the way, that would be considered one of the nastier combinatorics questions you, you would see. And that was because, unlike all the other ones where I only gave you certain numbers to pick from in that Scrabble tile analogy, here I had more than one of the same Scrabble tile. I had to use the uh, permutations with repetitions, the Mississippi one, or Tawasson, or whatever examples. that. Oh, you're, when we found the permutations of your last names, first and last names, that one. Next. 15. I like number 15. I like number 15. Number 15 is a nice question. You know, it's funny. As soon as I said that, I heard about 10 more people start turning pages. It was quiet, quiet. And as soon as I said, I like number 15, I should turn, turn, turn. Follow along, boys and girls. Follow along. Are some x's in the denominator? Are some x's on the top? Then is it possible that when they get multiplied together somewhere along the way they could all cancel? That's the constant term. When? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Uh, to figure it out, Kayla, I'm going to ignore the 2 because that's not going to change when the x's cancel. And I'm going to ignore the negative. That's not going to change when the x's cancel. I'm just going to look at the actual x's that are on the top and the bottom to figure out when they cancel. And then I'll take it from, oh, actually, all this wants to know is when they cancel. So I'll be able to stop there. I won't even have to actually figure out the term. What's my great big exponent here? So it would be 8 of the 10th, 8 of the 9th, uh, b, 8 of the 8th, b squared. I think I'll be able to figure out the pattern from three things. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, so what I think I have here is 1 over x squared to the 10th, because a is that thing, but I'm ignoring the 2 temporarily. Here, I have 1 over x squared to the 9th, x cubed to the 1. Is that okay? Here, I have 1 over x squared to the 8th. x cubed squared. And now I'll start to spot the pattern. How many x's on top here? None. How many on the bottom? Okay, this is an x to the negative 20. There's 20 on the bottom. How many x's on the bottom here? 18. How many on top? There's 15 on the bottom. That's the same as x to the negative 15. Bet you we're going up by fives. But let's see. Let's see if we got a negative 10 here. Oh, I have uh, 16 on the bottom, 6 on the top, 10 left on the bottom. Okay. Negative 20, negative 15, negative 10, negative 5. You know when I have zero x's? What term number? 
fifth turn. I hope that's what I said on my answer key. I think I did. Yay! Okay. Next. Okay, while people are pausing then, if you want to look at your review and go to number one, I'll tell you which questions I really, 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 really like. Let's see. I like number one, two, four is good. Seven. Can you all look at number eight for a second? Do you know how I know that this is a permutation and not a combination? That's a trigger word for that, arranged. In English, an arrangement is an ordering. Right? Rearrange yourselves. What I really mean is don't change the group, but change the order. Okay? So arrangement. That's one of my trigger words. So here they, it would be 8P8 or 8 factorial. Sorry, 7P7 or 7 factorial. Uh, number 9, so simplifying a factorial. Oh, this is the one I was trying to think of. So that N factorial all squared on the bottom, I would break that up into N factorial, N factorial. And then mentally I would kind of divide the fraction in half, simplify each half, and then kind of see what was left. Thirteen, but make sure you can handle thirteen if it was a written question as well. Now it's multiple choice, so you guys know how I did it, right? What does it say? What did I do for number thirteen? I just tried the answers. Multiple choice, don't waste your time. Try the answers. Will I give you that as a multiple choice? Everybody shake your head no. Will I give you some kind of a factorial equation that's always written? Absolutely, that's on your test. Um, eventually, 15 is good, 16 is good. 16 will be a written, though. Okay. 18 is good. So 19 is good. 19 is different from 15 because 19, it's nice regular rectangles. You know, so there's no overlap. So you can use the uh, shortcut of permutations and choose. There'll be one something like that as a multiple choice. And then on the written, there'll be one where you have to use Pascal's. Okay? Uh, 20. Twenty two is good. Um, there's going to be something sort of like number 23. What I mean by that is there's going to be some question that you have to use the fundamental counting principle and ask yourself, how many choices do I have for the first blank? How many choices do I have for the second blank? How many choices do I have for the third blank? How many total choices? I thought I was doing pretty good, but apparently I lost one member of the audience there. Okay. This, so this one was license plates. I don't know if it'll be license plates. Uh, I'll be honest, at least one of them is going to be uh, given X number of digits, how many four-digit numbers or four-digit odd numbers or four-digit even numbers or three-digit odd numbers. Please remember that you can't begin a number with what? Zero. And I guarantee I'll put zero in the Scrabble bag to make sure that to test you on that. Okay. Um, 25, again, make sure you can find a given term of a binomial expansion. 26, but hopefully that one's obvious. Twenty-nine. How do I know that seven p three and not seven c three? Arrangements. Okay, that's the English word. There's others. Like if they start talking about positions, a vice president, a president, and a, okay, that that's clearly a permutation as well because it matters when you get selected. But if you're not sure, one of your triggers, Shannon. See the word arrangement. That's permutation. 
I've already said a bunch like number 31. So, but yeah, 31. 33 is good. How do I know number 37 is a permutate? Well, 37 is a permutation, but it's a word. How many R's are in this word in number 37? Four. How many G's are in this word? Four. How many Y's are in... Do you see what I'm doing, by the way? I'm taking the first letter of the colors, right? This is a word. Now, it's an arrangement. Yes, see the word arrangement, Regan? So it's a permutation, but it's got repetitions. So this would be mixing up the word R, 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 G, 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 Y, 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 which would be 12 factorial over 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial. Whatever the heck that is, I don't know. Uh, 38 is great. That, that's what I was getting. Some kind of a fundamental counting principle kind of a question. Okay. Uh, 39. Really quickly right now, what's the answer to number 39? Don't say 9. 10. Right? So 41, I've already said you never want something like that on the written. Where you're either missing lines or you're sharing lines. You've got overlapping lines or something. Uh... 43 is, I like, except it's going to be a written, and it's going to be first four terms. And that one's too easy because the x is all by itself. I'm going to put something in front of each variable. In fact, you know what? Probably one of the variables might even have an exponent on it. So like it might be like a 5x squared minus 2y or something like that. Okay? Uh, 44 makes a great written question. 46 is great. In fact, I'll even go more specific than that. Look at number 46. Is it a word? Everybody say yes. Does it have more than one of the same letter? So it's one of those. One, it's going to be number 3, 4, or 5. I don't think it's 2. And that's not a surprise because I've told you the multiple choice is going to follow the exact same order that I taught you. Number 1, I guarantee, is fundamental counting principle. Probably number 2 as well. Probably number 2, though, might have some kind of a restriction. Uh, number three is going to be a straight permutation. Number four is going to be a permutation with repetition. Maybe number five, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, same, you know, same with 48. Uh, a lot of these start to get repetitive, so I'm not repeating myself over and over and over. Uh, we nuked number 54. Mitch, can you cross out number 54, please? So something like 57 is a good example of a, here's a fundamental counting principle, but with some type of restrictions. In this case, two odd digits followed by three even digits. Repetitions are not allowed. Okay. Five blanks and carefully think how many choices for each blank, right? Um, okay, written section. So some kind of a factorial question so something like number three but i might give it to you in choose notation or permutation notation as well and i will do one of these in just a second because somebody has asked absolutely number five some kind of a committee question where i say okay you got you know, a committees or cards i don't know i can't remember which one i typed in i typed it up on the weekend um so it's either going to be you know, uh, how many ways are there to get three spades, two hearts, and four others? Or uh, girls and guys or some kind of a, a break breakup that way. And there will also be a part B where there's an at most or an at least. At least three hearts or at least two males or at most two males, which would include two or one or zero. List your cases. Boys and girl, hang on. What does or mean? Add. What does and mean? Multiply. Is it you? Some, I don't know. Someone in one of my classes said it wrong. Might have been you. I can't remember. It was you. Oh, yeah. I remember. Do it as a memory here. Okay. Six again and seven algebraic solving factorial type equations. I'll do a couple of those in a second. So nine is, again, classic committee question. In fact, nine is nice because there is part A is just committee that would be 30 choose 3. 
Part B, are they talking about specific positions? That's a permutation. That would be either drawing three blank lines and going 30 choices, 29 choices, 28 choices, or that's also the same as 30P3 on your calculator. And then Part C is in at most at least, I think. Oh, no, Part C is uh, one boy, two girls, so division. That's also a nice kind of a written question. Um, I already said number 11, except I said to you it's going to be four terms, and it's going to have a coefficient in front of the x. And the different number in front of the y, probably, and maybe even an exponent. 12 and 13 are all good. 14, uh, 15 is good. So 15 is an example of a combinatorics question where I've given it to you in fact in uh, choose notation first, and then you're going to solve the factorial equation. So someone said, Mr. Duick, could you do one of those? How about I do, you want me to do number three? Is that good? Okay. Hearing no argument. Isn't this like number 15? Isn't number 15 a solving a factorial equation? Is it or isn't it? I'm going from memory, but I thought it was, yeah? Except I think this one's harder, is it not? It's got more stuff in it? This one? Okay, I'll do 15 as well, but I don't mind doing two. Let's do this one first, though. Okay. Uh, Kayla, first thing I would do, by the way, is see that three factorial? No, it's a six. Like, I, I would right away say, let's... I can't do anything with the algebraic factorials, but the number factorials, I can evaluate those, and that looks a little cleaner. So I would say to myself, this is n factorial all over n minus 2 factorial times 6 equals 5. And then, to be honest, I would cross-multiply part of this. I would move this 6 over to this side by multiplying. I would solve that equation. You okay with how I got there? Okay need to deal with this. Which one's bigger? n or n minus 2? That's the one I'll start to expand. I'll write it as n, 1 less, 1 less. Ooh, stop there because now the denominator just appeared. You okay with that? Can I cancel? Is it factored? Yeah. So I can. In fact, here's the equation you end up with. n times n minus 1 equals 30. Now what? Yes, we'll get rid of brackets. Distribute, if you want the fancy word. Uh, you'll get n squared minus n, and then it's a quadratic. So I'm going to minus the 30 over to this side as well, make it equal to 0. I know you know what to do, but I saw a few other blank eyes, by the way, which is why I'm continuing. Okay, This is going to be factor n minus 6, n plus 5 equals 0, and you get 6 and negative 5. And are we done? Can't have a negative factorial because you can't have negative 5 objects. Okay? Yep. Okay. What is 3 factorial? Be more specific, please, in your head without a calculator. <laughs> you want to be wearing your visor a little more often, I think. Yeah. Maybe a mouth guard. Or get that helmet checked, okay? 5. Woo! Okay, you okay with that? So what I said, Mitch, is often there's going to be a numerical factorial question here, yeah. uh, expression here. Get rid of that. Like, do that math. If there's a, in fact, I think there's one somewhere in the review where there's like a 4 factorial, and you'll notice on my solution key, I didn't even write it. I put a 24 there right away. Looks better. Okay, Especially uh, 2 factorial is the one that shows up the most. What is 2 factorial? Just plain old 2. So that one you can even just, just erase the exclamation mark. Okay, are you okay on 15, or do you want me to do 15? I can do it if you want me to. Yeah. I have no memory of what that one looks like, but you're saying that one looked uglier? Oh, no, not 15. 
You're talking about, I did 15 already. Oh, in the written section. Oh, I was going, wait a minute. In the written section. Oh, that there. Sure. Do you have your formula sheet in front of you? Can you tell me from your formula sheet what is NPR equal to? If I translate that here, isn't that n factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals 90? And do, by the way, can you see we just turned it into this question now? Except instead of a 5, I got a 90 there. You'll get n squared minus n minus 90 equals 0 for what it's worth. Okay, you ready? Look up. Here's how you can check your answer. If I'm using a permutation, this only works for this type, we're using a permutation. The answers that have to work, the numbers when I'm making this up, the numbers that I use here, they have to be gettable, obtainable by multiplying two numbers that are one apart. I'll tell you what I mean by that. 9 times 10 would work. 8 times 9, I could get 70. If I put a 72 right there, there would also be an answer. So I think there's one question in your review where there's a 42 right there, right away I know the answer is 6 or 7 because 42 is 6 times 7. There's only certain numbers that I can plug in that won't give you decimal answers. Can we have decimal answers? No, because you can't have 6.8 objects. Okay. So when I'm making these up and choose 2, well, I could go like this. 2 times 3. I could put a 6 there. 3 times 4. I could put a 12 there. 4 times 5. I could put a 20 there. 5 times 6. I put a 30 there. So if you when you get one of those, for example, if you saw, oh, uh, if you saw 56 there, 56 is what times what? You know what? The answer is either 8 or 7. I'll tell you that right now. That's how I made it up. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's always the bigger one if you play around with it for a while. It's probably 8, but... You can't just write the answer. You've got to show me work, but I've given you kind of a built-in error check. Now, that does not work for the uh, weird generic factorial ones where they've already given it to you in factorial notation. That probably doesn't work there, although I notice 30 is 6 times 5. Maybe there is something to this. Um, well, no, 10 is not. 10 is not. Okay, so it doesn't work for that. But I've never showed kids that until the very end. I just, if some kids spot it. Any others you would like me to do? Yeah. Multiple choice, 12, yep. Yeah. I'm putting this in theory online. Yeah. In theory online. I, I, you, the only concern I have is every once in a while, it hasn't worked, oh, right? I'm batting about 90% right now, but that 10% could show up one day at the wrong time. And for some reason, either the server or the video service or what it, I've had days where for 24 hours, I couldn't upload the, the video. We're doing number 12. Okay. Got the review? Look in front of you. Can you read number 12 out loud to us in a nice booming vo pat, voice pat in the front row here? Now how many ways can four players play three wars using the distributed I don't see that at all. Here's what I see. I see a word. Can you see what the answer is? It's going to be 10 factorial over 4 factorial, 3 factorial, 3 factorial. And it's not a coincidence that there's 10 letters and 10 people. If they'd said uh, 9 people, you guys don't have the skills to do this question. In fact, it would be fairly tough. Okay. It's 
why, I don't know if you remember, but I said quite often, what we're going to do is we're going to turn a, a word problem into a word. There. I'm, uh, I think the answer is D. I can't remember. Oh, it was a B? Okay. Oh, D is 10 factorial probably. That would be one wrong answer to put on there. Um, also, probably one of the other answers is like 10 choose 4 or 10 choose 3 because that might be something else kids might try. I don't know. But it, it's a word. Is that okay? Next. Yeah. 53. And Pat, I already kind of gave them the I like these questions routine, so you'll have to watch the video or ask your peers. So I probably have to do 52. Well, let's look at the whole thing. Oh. Dope. Wrong file, Mr. Duke. Um. At least one car, Justin, that means one car or two cars or three cars. Yeah, I need more room. One car or two cars or three cars or four cars. What does or mean? and I drew my little bucket. I said in this case, although they've talked about cars, trucks, and motorcycles, here the only thing they're mentioning is cars. So I went with cars and others. How many cars are there? 12. How many others are there? 13. And the reason I can do that is they haven't specified anything about trucks or motorcycles, so I guess they're treating them as one group. Can you see now what it's going to be? It's going to be uh, 12 choose 1, 13 choose 3. That's the first expression. 12 choose 2, 13 choose 2. That's the second expression. 12 choose 3, 13 choose 1. 12 choose 4, 13 choose 0. Let me show you my work for that question. And then I went to my calculator. I wrote down each of those and just added them together. I didn't type this all in in one line. I typed that in first, wrote down the number, and then hit second function, enter, and change the 1 to a 2 and the 3 to a 2, enter. Change the 3 to a... It just kept retyping it that way. Is that okay? That was a bit tricky. I had to think about it for a second. And then I went... What I actually did here, Justin, is I treated it like cards. Initially, I was like, what the heck? And I said, wait, wait a minute. If they had said at least one spade, I wouldn't have a separate group of diamonds, a separate group of hearts, and a separate group of clubs. I would have gone spades and others. I don't care about the other distributions. So you ready? Here's the other question, preview of coming attractions. Not on the review, but since you guys came to the tutorial, you guys get the big bonus. Oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong unit. No wonder I couldn't find it. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Here we go. No laughing. If you have your workbooks here, now if you don't, that's fine. But if you have, you can just write this down. But for what it's worth, I really like page 413, example 4. I really like page 413, example 4. Page 413, example 4 is a nice question. Or if you want some more examples similar to that, I'm thinking that uh, number 10 would be examples of said question. The only thing I would do in 10A, just because it annoys me, what letter did they put there, Lorenz? We always called that a B. I would just 
overwrite it like that so I wouldn't confuse myself. Otherwise, I just why make it take the risk of making a silly mistake? Back to the tutorial. Mr. Duick, will you show us how to do one of those? Actually, no. I'm going to say look at your notes and figure it out. That's part of the test and see who's... But I told you you're going to see one. Okay? Going backwards, where instead of saying, here's the binomial, find the seventh term, I'm going to give you the seventh term, part of the binomial, and find the missing part of the binomial, please. Okay, I've told you about the written, so let's talk a bit more. Uh, written question, written section is going to have, I believe the first question on the written is, I give you a binomial and I say write the first four terms out. Ah, uh, hang on. Don't go there. Ah, yeah. First question. I give you some kind of a binomial. I say, write the first four terms. Second written question is a pathway. Third written question, and I've told you this already, is one of those committee card at most, at least, more than guys, girls, or spades, clubs, one of those. Fourth question is solve a factorial. Then I have um, a card question. How many seven card hands have at least three reds or, or something? Then I have the one that I just told you about that I like, that I like, that I like, that I like. And then the, I also have a fundamental counting principle kind of a question with some kind of a restriction. For example, if I give you a word, but I say certain letters have to be together. I think we did one where the word was kitchen, and the question said the T and the C and the H had to be together. So all I did is I pretended that was one weird-looking letter Scrabble tile. Ch, T, C, H. And then I had a K and I, an E and an N. So I only had five Scrabble tiles. Ooh, but how many ways can I mix up that Scrabble? I'll let you think about it. I just told you every what one question on the written. The one I'm still saving, so. What about the multiple choice? Pretty straightforward. In fact, I would say if you work your way through the review, um, there will be no surprises on the multiple choice. And on the written, I think the only thing that's on the written that's not in the review somewhere was the one that I'd said about 30 seconds ago, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. But that was in your homework, so I feel OK with that one. We even did that one in class. You should find this a pretty easy test to get a decent grade on. It's a pretty tough test to get perfect. Right? It's got a couple of curveballs. So it's a good test, I think. Any others you want me to do? It's a short unit. Yeah. Sure. Can you find one like that for me? They are if you're never late. Sure. There is one, of, I think I said, I think there is one of these on the written. or I, It's either on the multiple choice or on the written. I might have done both, I can't remember, but you're definitely going to see one of these tomorrow, so sure. Do you have a formula sheet in front of you, Lorenz? Get one. Because may, that may be why you're having such a tough, tough time with these. Have I kind of gone on a rant about why you should have your formula sheet in front of you during this unit several times? Nod your head. OK. You got one? OK. The formulas for this unit 
are about two thirds of the way down. Find them. Okay. Find the one that has a T for term in it. Read it to me. Okay, that's the one. So the first thing I would do is I would carefully copy this one out if I was doing this on the test. Is that correct? Okay. What term do they want me to find here? So I want term 10. That's our abbreviation. What term? I'm going to ask you again not to make fun of you, but to illustrate a point. What term? For that to be a 10, what does K have to be? Can we, guys, he's got to learn this. Okay. Do you understand why it has to be a 9? What do I want? Term what? So for that to be a 10, what does K have to be? Why? Because this is the equation, the formula has a K plus 1. If I want the K plus 1 to be a 10, the next thing we run into is that. What's n here? No? Well, it, well that it, n is somewhere here. Pat, what is it? 10. Okay, so n is the exponent. Oh, are you saying that n stands for number? Really? That's how you remember it? Wow, you're clever. Lorenz, what's a? The first part of the binomial. B is the second part of the binomial. Okay? So you have to be able to find those. It's not on your for this is on your formula sheet, but you have to know what each of these you have to know what each of these means. Once you have that, it's plug and chug. Are you ready? What's that? Choose. What's that? What's that? To the power of, what's that in your head, please? No calculator. What's that? So what you're going to go on your calculator is 10 choose 9. times 2 to the, I guess 2 to the 1, so I can just go times 2, times negative 1 to the ninth, which would be negative 1, I think. But can you see if there was actual numbers there? I could follow the numbers as well. They're on the head of this episode. You can have it for a while. Sure. Or just but drag them onto your laptop and double check, double click on them to see if they play. They might not if you don't have a different media player installed besides the Windows media player, but I can fix that. Oh, I did do, I gave you, ah, being proactive, that's the way to do this. Pardon me? I think you have to type it like, oh, I lost my calculator. Oh, the people at home, that last conversation, I was just giving something to a teacher, if you're wondering what the heck that was. The people in the room figured it out. You're going to go 10, choose 9, times 2 uh, to the 1, but if there was a different exponent there, I'd put that there, times, for a negative number, I always put it in brackets just to be safe, to the 9th, but if there's a different number there, that would be a different exponent there. And I get this, negative 20, that's the coefficient. Yes? Because there's a negative right there, and it's not going to vanish. It's 10 choose 9 times 2 to the 1. Negative 1 to the ninth power is negative 1. If they're even, the negatives would pair up and cancel out. If the exponent was even. even. Shanna. 
right? Oh, sorry. Right? That negative doesn't cancel. I don't know. I just typed it all. I did all of the numbers. Yes? And then I have an x to the 1. I'll just write x. I have a y to the ninth, but where is the y? So you do that. You'd lose marks definitely because it's nowhere. It's not on the top. Look, it's not on the top. Then you wouldn't get perfect. I'd glare at you and be going, "Oh, your generation sucks at fractions." No, I've pushed you into mediocrity during the trig identities unit. Please, we became mediocre at fractions. I can almost tolerate it now. Almost. Any others? Thirty-eight. Jasmine, what block are you? Yeah. Can you put it on top of block D for me, please? Thank you. 38. Oh, nice question. How many odd three-digit whole numbers are there? You know what? I'm going to go fundamental counting principle because this is one of those uh, odd or even number type things. Okay. What makes an odd number an odd number? Okay. It ends in a 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. How many choices do I have for that last digit then? Because that's the restriction. And I've told you I don't care where the restriction appears. I always do it first. Five. Does it say I can repeat or does it say I cannot repeat? Does, does it say I cannot repeat? Then I can. Okay, so let's suppose I picked a seven. Back in the bag, shake the bag up. How many digits are now in the bag? Ten. How many choices do I have for the first number though? Why nine? Not zero. And it doesn't say repetitions are not allowed, so back in the bag, shake the bag back up. How many do I have sitting in the bag? It's going to be 50 times 9, 450. Nice question. Some good thinking there. Tricky-ish, but not so hard that I would consider that anywhere near. In fact, I'd expect most of my kids to get that, but lots of potential to make sloppy mistakes and me to gently yell at you in love and say, fix those mistakes. You don't yell at us in love, Mr. Dulick. Well, I do yell. Any others? Yeah, 35. This one was kind of tricky. I would probably consider this a B plus, maybe even an A minus level question, Shanna. So good question. Okay. What's my great big exponent? Now the problem here is they didn't tell me which term to find. See, if they told me it was the, I'm making this up, third term, then I would go TK plus 1 equals N choose K, A to the N minus K b to the k. If they want the third term, k is 2. And I, I plug a problem is I don't know when that appears. What would you say my big exponent was? So I think it's going to be a to the 6th, then a to the 5th, b, then a to the 4th, b squared. And a matches... Are there's, are there's no exponents inside here to make this pattern change a little bit? You know what? What term number is that, Shanna? It is. I just guessed third. That was a fluke, by the way. You know what this question wants me to do? It wants me to find term three. Are you okay with the rest of that now? Are you okay using this equation, or do you want me to do it? I can do it if you want. Right? Again, key is k is 2, 
n is 6, a is 2a, b is negative 3b. I ignored the 2 and the negative 3 just to find out when the term occurred because the negative 2 and the negative 3 aren't going to change the exponents. That's why I just wrote a to the 6th, a to the 5th, b. I didn't care about the chooses. But now I do because they want the actual term. Is that okay? Justin, you had a question? Written 12b. Written 12b. Oh, very nice. I would consider this a nice upper level question. Probably what I would do, though, is... Well, no, this was on an exam, so this was fair game. Okay. So, B. We want four students grand total from seven boys and five girls, but it's got to have a female president, a male vice president, and then two other members chosen from the remaining students. So I'm going to have female president, male vice president, two others we don't care about. Well, sorry, we care about them. We want them to be on the committee. We don't, we don't care how they're selected. How many ways, here's my restrictions. I'll do them first. How many ways do I have to choose a female vice president? How many females are in the group? I got five ways to choose a female vice president. Order clearly matters here because they want, they're talking about positions. Okay. How many ways do I have to pick a male vice president? Seven. Do they care whether the remaining two are boys or girls or anything like that at all? No. Nope. Then you know what? How many kids do I have left to pick from? If I picked one girl and one boy, how many are left? Then, there it is. 35 times 90, whatever the heck that is, I don't know. But that's what it is. As soon as I did that, you're, ah, now I see it. And again, nice little question, good little extension. Uh, there is a combination of permutations and a com well a permutation and a combination. Kind of cool. Yo. No, I think I might have done this one wrong actually. You know why? I just thought about this. By the way, I was spacing out going, wait a minute, something's bugging me here. And then you raised your hand and brought me back. If I did that and that, that's a permutation. That's saying the order that those last two kids get picked matters, and it doesn't. What I should have done is I should have said, how many kids are left, Justin? Ten. Choose two. Who cares when they get picked? Just pick any two. That's what it should be. Yes? And then it's 35 times whatever the heck 10 choose 2 is, and I have no idea what 10 choose 2 is. That makes more sense to me. Otherwise, I would be counting, if I'd done it 10 times 9, I'd be counting Billy and then Jennifer as the same as Jennifer and then Billy. I'd be counting them as different events, and they're not. So yeah, there's an example of a permutation combined with a combination. That was that was a f considered a fairly tough question though. So if you're finding like I might not have got that right, don't feel bad, and hopefully you will if you see one like that. I would probably put this as a multiple choice myself, although this was a written in 2003. So fair enough. Any more? Any others? I'm good to go for a bit still. We winding down. Okay, bear with me for a moment when I hit stop and save.